Hi there, in this video I'm going to have a go at making some piston rings for the very first time for this odds and ends engine. And uh, there's loads of information out there on the internet as to, you know, the different methods that you can use to make piston rings and everybody seems to have their own ideas. And uh, Mr Crispin, he, he had a go at making some recently and he produced a couple of videos um, showing sort of his experience and, uh, you know, how to go about it. And he referred to a guy called George Trimble, or the George Trimble method. Uh, now George Trimble, uh, apparently he uh, produced an article for Strictly IC magazine which spanned three issues. And um, I, I tried to get hold of copies of uh, those um, articles, or those issues, um, from Strictly IC. But unfortunately they, they would only accept sort of... Um, checks in US dollars or money transfers in US dollars so that, that I found that a sort of a little bit restrictive um, but fortunately Earl has, has offered to try and get hold of me uh, some copies and forward them on which I really do appreciate um, also Peter sent me sort of quite a few links to different articles on the internet as to how to go about uh, making piston rings uh, so I'll put those links in uh, my video description uh, but anyway, f for the purposes of making my piston rings, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Earl's method, which is based around sort of bits and pieces of sort of uh, the various other methods that are available out there. So, uh, fingers crossed, it'll work out okay. Okay, so to quickly recap, um, my cylinder bore is 0.9948 of an inch, and the piston ring thickness and width need to be between a 25th and a 30th of the bore. Um, so I decided upon piston ring width of 36 thou, a thickness, thickness of 36 thou, an OD of 0.9948 to match the cylinder bore, and an ID of 0.9948 minus 0 0.036 times 2, which comes in at 0.9228. Now apparently you've got to use fine grain cast iron and um, I did ask e EKP Supplies whether or not their cast iron was fine grain but uh, they basically said well we've made loads of piston rings out of this stuff so uh, it should be okay so uh, fingers crossed we'll be okay. Okay so before I start I just need to make sure that this uh, compound slide is parallel with the bed um, and uh, this bracket here is something I made on the 3D printer. Uh, you can download it from Thingiverse, the, the STL file. But anyway, let's move it forward. And that looks spot on. Now the reason for doing this is I'm going to be using the compound slide to um, calculate the actual width of the piston rings when I cut them. So the first job is to uh, face this end off. So now I need to reduce the outside diameter down to uh, two thou over what the uh, OD should be on the uh, piston ring. So the um, OD should be 0.9948 so I'm aiming here for 0.9968. So I reckon half a thou to come off. Well, 
Well, we're looking for point uh, 9968, and that comes in at point 997. Two tenths of a thou out, happy with that. So now I need to get this down to 0.9948, so it's currently 0.9970, so that's uh, just over two thou to come off. Um, so obviously a thou um, off one side. So I'm going to use this 400 uh, wet and dry. I've put plenty of WD 40 on, and I'm going to hold it on with this uh, flat file just to take that thou off. I think it's about five tenths of a thou to go. I measure that to be now. Uh, spot on 0.9948 of an inch and I never ever thought I'd be working to tenths of a thou of an inch this is the cylinder and it's just a nice slip fit so I think I'm okay with that so now I need to bore the centre out I'm doing this in reverse to what Earl did Earl bored the centre out first and then did the OD, uh, but uh, I just felt safer doing the OD first, but uh, hopefully it'll work out okay. So now I'm going to use this boring bar to bring the uh, internal diameter down to 0.9928. Okay, so I'm nearly there. I reckon there's another couple of thou to come off in the internal diameter. So I've pl put plenty of WD-40 in here. Um, I'm going to make the final cut. 
and uh, I'm going to use the fine feed on the carriage and when I've made the, the, the cut I'll stop the lathe, withdraw the tool and cut again without making other, any other adjustments then I'll stop the lathe, withdraw the tool and then I'll cut again without any adjustments Well, I was aiming for uh, 0.9228 and I'm 0.9248 so a couple of thou over but uh, I'm happy with that ok so Will recommends making a little parting off tool based upon the Duclos method and this has got a little um, sort of angle here on the face of around about 10 degrees um, now the one I've made is uh, 52 thou uh, width on the end which is equivalent to 1.32 millimeters now the piston ring width to recap needs to be uh, 0.036 uh, inches finished but I'm going to part it off at 2 thou uh, bigger than that so I'm going to part off at 38 thou which is equivalent to 0.965 millimeters So the uh, compound dial is set to zero. Carriage is locked. And what I'm going to do first of all is just take a few thou off the front here, just so everything's sort of nicely set up. OK, so what I need to do now is I need to move the compound slide that way by 52 thou, which is 1.32 millimetres and that will take the parting tool, the right hand side of the parting tool, up to the edge here. Then I need to move it again another 38 thou, which is 0.965 millimetres. But I'll do all that off camera and then I'll, I'll get back to you when I'm making the cut. So before parting off I'm just going to uh, use this 400 grit just on the inside edge there and on the outside edge. So here we go, the first string, 170 RPM, taking it nice and steady. That didn't look good, did it? Well, it helps if I uh, actually lock the tool in place, doesn't it? I don't know. Oh, 
Hopefully we're all right. I think this will be a test dream. <laughs> Blimey. So I've cleaned up the uh, edges again with that uh, 400 grit and uh, we'll give it another try. Well that seemed to go okay, I managed to get four, um, now the first one's a little bit oversized, I think it's around about 47 thou, um, the other three are between 38 thou and 40 thou which is good, and uh, what I need to do now is make a little fixture to hold them while I uh, just use a bit of wet and dry to do some sanding, to get them down to uh, 36 thou. So this is just a piece of aluminium with a recess cut in it for the uh, piston ring to drop into. It's only 25 thou deep and then it's just a matter of going round in a figure of eight bringing it down to uh, dimension. If I can do an eight. <laughs> side so I'll get back to you once I've done them all well this is a scary bit now I've just used this little file to put a little nick in the bottom there Now I need to uh, use these pliers just to try and break it. A bit difficult with a camera in front of you. Mm, 
something a bit there. Yeah, it has broken it. There we have it. So I'll do exactly the same on the other three rings and then I'll get back to you. So here I've made a wedge out of a piece of mild steel and uh, it's about uh, four times the width of the ring so it's about 0.14 of an inch. Uh, place it between these fire bricks and hopefully we'll be able to heat it up and uh, it'll retain the gap when it falls off, if it falls off. So let's see how we get on. hasn't fallen off but maybe it'll fall off once it's uh, cooled down. Well I've just pressed the piston ring in with um, the piston and against this bright light I can't see any light leaking past the ring and the cylinder. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so uh, what I've done is I've used a bit of white spirit to clean everything up. Unfortunately, that ring didn't uh, break correctly, uh, but at least I've got three good ones. And what I've done is I've run each ring in the groove just to make sure that it sits okay and that the inside of the groove doesn't uh, come beyond the outside of the uh, piston. And everything looks all right. What I also did uh, on a couple of them is run a bit of uh, 500, no, 400 grit emery um, in the gaps uh, just to take a little bit off because uh, they ran just slightly tight when they were pushed into the uh, cylinder bore. So what I'll do off camera is I'll just uh, fit them and then I'll get back to you. Well they look pretty good. So I'll uh, try and fit uh, the piston into the cylinder. I think that might be a bit tricky. So again, I'll do that bit off camera. So to compress the rings, I just used this uh, bit of thin metal and just held it round the piston and then just slotted it in. And uh, there we have it. And it sounds really good. Very happy with that. Ever so smooth. Well, I just can't believe how uh, how well that has turned out. It's just unbelievable. Um, never made a piston ring before in my life, and. Uh, Earl's method worked an absolute treat. I never thought when I started model engineering a couple of years ago I'd be working to tenths of a thou. <laughs> um, but that method of using a flat file with emery on top um, just to get that outside diameter of the piston ring spot on to within a tenth of a thou worked an absolute treat. Uh, so I'm really happy with the result. Um, and you can eat, I mean it runs so so well in the cylinder and uh, if I put my hand over it, I mean it's a crude test, I go like that 
I get nothing, but if I take my hand up slightly away, <laughs> the piston goes back. So, you know, I'm, I'm over the moon. So, um, many thanks to Earl for uh, the detailed instructions. And uh, I hope some of you found uh, the video of interest. And I hope to see you later.